Of course, if you haven't done so, pause the video and retry the question before listening on. We're going to try to determine the position x that this third bead is located in order to be in equilibrium. We'll begin by assigning a capital Q for this charge that lies between Q1 and Q2. And then what we'll do is assume that this has a positive charge. It turns out the analysis would work just as well if we assumed it had a negative charge. And assuming it has a positive charge, then what will happen is Q1, which is also positive, is going to repel this charge. So therefore it would push it to the right. And we could label that perhaps F1. And then we have Q2, which is also positively charged, would repel the middle charge, and in that case it would push it to the left. And we'll call that force F2. Now, to be in equilibrium simply means that the magnitude of the force pointing to the right must equal the magnitude of the force pointing to the left. So we can begin to write that F1 will equal F2. Now, these are both electric forces, and we know that electric forces that act between two charges will equal a constant K sub E multiplied by the magnitude of charge on the first object multiplied by the magnitude of charge on the second object divided by the distance between them squared. So with that equation in mind, we can fill in an expression for F1. For example, F1 would equal the constant K sub E multiplied by the magnitude of charge Q1 multiplied by the charge on capital Q. And then this will be divided by the distance between them squared. We can see that that distance has been labeled x, so we will just have x squared. And this will equal on the other side the electric force between q and q2. So we would have the constant Ke multiplied by the magnitude of charge q2 multiplied by the magnitude of charge on capital Q. And then we'll divide that by the distance between those two charges squared. Now look very carefully, the distance between capital Q and Q2 is this distance right here. We can hopefully see that that distance would be d minus x. And that would give us the distance that we seek. So we'll plug in d minus x. Don't forget to square it. Now we can simplify this equation because we can cancel out the k's on this side as well as the q's on this side. So we'll rewrite the equation in a much simpler form. Remember that Q1 was positive, so we don't need the absolute value symbols anymore. We'll just say Q1 over x squared, and this will equal same reason over here, Q2 over d minus x squared. Now if we wish, we can plug in the known values. We come back up here, and we see that Q1 was equal to 3Q, and Q2 was equal to Q. So Q1 is 3Q, and Q2 was just Q. Now that's actually somewhat convenient because we can basically multiply both sides of this equation by 1 over Q, and those Qs would cancel out. Remember that you would leave a placeholder 1 in the numerator on the right-hand side. So now we have 3 over x squared equals 1 over d minus x squared. Now, we want to solve this equation for x, recall. And it turns out the easiest thing to do is actually square root both sides of this equation. Now, let me recall that when you have the square root of a fraction, that that can be rewritten as the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So with that property in mind, we would have the square root of 3 over the square root of x squared equals the square root of 1 over the square root of d minus x squared. Now we also remember that the square root of x squared just can simplify to x. And similarly, the square root of d minus x squared is just d minus x. So now the equation becomes radical 3 over x equals, and the square root of 1 is just 1, over d minus x. We are getting there. I would probably cross multiply next, so we'll multiply those two quantities, radical 3 times d minus x, and then I'll cross multiply the other way, x times 1, which of course is just x. Let's distribute the radical 3. So now we have radical 3d minus radical 3x equals x. Let's go ahead and add 
radical 3x to both sides. So it will cancel out on the left-hand side. Now we have radical 3d equals x plus radical 3x. Notice we have a common denominator, or excuse me, a common factor of x. So we're going to factor out the x. So we'll have x times 1 plus radical 3. This equals radical 3 times d. And finally, we divide both sides by 1 plus radical 3. And this will give us the expression for x. So it's going to be the square root of 3 times d over 1 plus the square root of 3. So now we can see that all we have to do is plug in the value of d. And that was given above as 1.5 meters. So we'll fill in 1.5 meters. And then we will carefully type this into our calculator. And when we do that, we should end up with 0.951. And this will come out in meters. So this would be the correct value of x.